Once we had the uh, buffalo in the salt, we had enough bait to focus on uh, the crocodile hunt. And uh, two shoulders were removed from the buffalo uh, to actually put up uh, baits for the crocodile. Now, uh, before you can start baiting, you actually need to figure out kind of where these crocs are. And we actually found uh, two different ones. Uh, one was actually favoring the bank of the Zambezi River, uh, coming out sunning itself. Uh, and uh, we actually put in two stocks on this specific crocodile, uh, but unfortunately, it was a uh, it was a very smart and old crocodile. And uh, every time, uh, you know, the bank was kind of overhung a little bit, and it was very tough to very silently creep up onto uh, the specific crocodile. On the second day after the second stock, that the bank actually collapsed, and uh, he never came back in uh, on that specific sunning spot. Now, one thing uh, one needs to remember is is uh, once you once you've located these crocodiles, it's it's kind of easy uh, because if you could uh, put a bait uh, close by where you find them, uh, very often they'll uh, they'll come back to it and and may hit that bait. Uh, something else to remember is that obviously uh, these areas are not solely occupied by the crocodiles, and there are many other animals to consider. And uh, you know you you still have to really move quietly and slowly. Uh, because anything that you spook is going to spook your croc away from the, the bait or uh, from where it's uh, sunning itself. We were also fortunate to uh, to actually uh, locate or see a, a croc that favored one of the islands. And again, on the islands, you need to be careful because those islands uh, have really poor visibility. And at the same time, you know, they are occupied by elephant and sometimes uh, hippo. Uh, and very often snakes. So you need to be kind of uh, careful when you when you move on those islands. Uh, but we saw a, a crocodile that really uh, was a monster uh, enjoying uh, one of these islands and it would either stay in the reeds or actually crawl out onto the sand sunning itself. But again, it was a really clever uh, old crocodile and we, we made a stock on this crocodile only once and uh, got really close, but the reeds were so thick that we couldn't get a, a shot in on the crocodile. And it was actually lying with its head facing the water, uh, like they always, you know, most often do to get into the water very quickly. And uh, it just took uh, one of those reeds to snap and uh, this crocodile was gone. And after that, you know, it, it picked a spot where uh, it was laying wide in the open and there was just no way uh, getting close to it while it was on that sandbank. Uh, so uh, another plan had to be made and uh, we set up a bait on that specific island as well. Uh, so uh, there was hope of at least attracting one of the two crocodiles uh, from the two baits and, uh, you know, maybe maybe get a, a decent shot in. Just a couple of uh, comments on baiting these crocodiles. I think firstly, uh, when you set up a bait, uh, that crocodile is going to attempt one of two things. Either he's going to attempt to take that bait and pull it into the water. Uh, or secondly, he's going to tear at it and uh, rip it apart and pull chunks out of it. Uh, so uh, a really sturdy anchoring point has to be put in place for those baits. So you can see from this uh, visuals, uh, you're using very, very thick gauge wire and uh, pretty long and stout uh, pieces of wood that needs to be driven deep into the sand or soil uh, to protect. And then secondly, uh, once you build the blind, you have to really camouflage that blind because their eyesight is very acute. And if you, if they see you move, uh, uh, you're going to, you're going to lose that croc. It'll just dive back into the water and it'll be gone. Uh, so we actually had to uh, cut some foliage on the on the bank and actually move it onto the island because uh, on the island you restrict it just basically to reeds and maybe a couple of big trees so uh, there's not a lot of foliage to use to to build that blind and then as i said uh, you know once you get to that island you need to be careful you know there's fresh hippo tracks everywhere so uh, they're going to be there and you just need to be uh, really uh, careful and, and just mind them uh, usually they'll run into the water, but you don't want to find yourself between uh, themselves and the, the edge of the water. So uh, uh, just pay attention and, uh, you know, then it's the hard work to start uh, building that uh, or first anchoring the bait and then secondly, building the blind. Uh, so Miles McCollum uh, actually was active building the, the blind on the island and anchoring the bait uh, on the island. 
in anchoring the bite, uh, firstly, two uh, big logs are driven into the ground at an angle. And once those uh, logs are driven into the ground at least a, a foot, foot and a half deep, then a cross uh, section is attached by that thick gauge wire. And only then is the, uh, uh, the meat actually attached to that cross member and to the bottom of those uh, posts that you've driven into the sand. Uh, so the idea is to really make that crocodile work very hard uh, to, to tear at that meat and not be able to remove it from your uh, bait station and pull it back into the water. Uh, so a, a meticulous uh, affair uh, to get this set up. Uh, but uh, if not done properly, uh, you know, you lose the bait and then you lose the croc. Then secondly, you know, once the uh, uh, area for the uh, blind has been selected, uh, you need to clear up a shooting alley. So at this specific island, we cut clear uh, about 36 feet uh, or 36 yards uh, for the shooting alley. And uh, as you can look, uh, we're now looking from the bait back to the blind. And you can see it's, it's uh, cleaned up very well so that you don't have anything interfere with that shot because it's a pretty precise shot that you've got to make. And then, uh, you know, the camouflage start and uh, you have somebody standing at the bait uh, while the camouflage is being put in and two guys behind to make sure that no movement is detected from the bait. And then, uh, you know, finally, uh, you have to put in a, a rest for the, for the rifle and a small window for that rifle barrel and scope to go through so that you can actually see what you're shooting at. And once uh, all of that is, is uh, put together, uh, then the waiting starts. And, uh, you know, at least twice a day, we would go out and uh, in the afternoons, check these, uh, these baits walking into these blinds and uh, uh, trying to see if we could uh, have a crocodile hitting that, uh, that bait. Now, unfortunately, this specific bait on this island, even though a lot of effort, time and energy has gone into it, it was just absolutely, uh, unfortunately, never hit uh, by a crocodile. That big one uh, never came to this site. Uh, you know, it was it was right on the water's edge, so it's impossible that he didn't know it was there, but he was just too smart to come out. Now, at the same time, uh, Dave Mann was actually uh, scouting the, the bank of the Zambezi River and with his team, they found a little inlet close to where we found the crocodile uh, that we stalked twice and where the bank collapsed on its uh, sunning site. And uh, they went into this little inlet knoll and, and hung another bait or, you know, uh, put another bait up uh, in a very much the same fashion. Uh, they also put in a stick uh, 12 feet from the bait to make sure that we had some way to gauge the, uh, the length of the crocodile. And... Uh, you know, in this uh, specific site, uh, there was no need to put up a blind. If you could look at this, uh, you can see that both banks are pretty high. Uh, the bank on the left of this gentleman is actually the high bank, which uh, we were going to shoot from. And it was it was downwind, so they wouldn't smell us. And, uh, you know, if we could uh, if we could creep up on that bank very slowly and quietly, uh, there might have been a, an opportunity uh, for a shot uh, to be taken from there. I really enjoyed these uh, southern carmine bee eaters uh, coming in to nest uh, on, into the bank of the Zambezi uh, a tremendous amount. Uh, these birds are very highly active. I mean, they make a lot of noise and they're, they're actually uh, phenomenal hunters in the air. Uh, they go after insects and, uh, you know, they, they hunt all day long. And uh, in the evenings, they will start settling down, going into their nests and then uh, also, uh, but just before they go into their nest, they'll sit on branches and it's absolutely a, a very fine spe spectacle to, to just watch. And it's something that you get to enjoy while hunting. So every time we went out to check uh, baits on these crocs, uh, you know, we had opportunity to look at these birds. It was just absolutely um, uh, stunning uh, to just see them and a lot of fun to watch them. So one of the dilemmas we ran into with this uh, crocodile hunt was which uh, specific rifle to take for the hunt. I had a scoped uh, 300 Holland Holland and an open-sided uh, 470 Nitro Express. And uh, in the end, we decided to take both. So here my wife is carrying the uh, 470 Nitro and I was carrying the 300 Holland Holland. And uh, yeah, on the second day after uh, Dave Mann put in the, uh, the bait uh, at this little inlet, uh, we we're stalking uh, or really going into this or approaching this area very quietly at 5.30 in the afternoon and heard these crocs uh, feeding there. 
and uh, I eventually got on the bank, got on the sticks with a double. And uh, yeah, it was uh, a little bit of an issue for me to wait. So it took a long time for me to take that first shot, but uh, I had to wait for that crocodile to be very still. And as it was facing completely away from me, um, I had to take that first shot uh, behind the head uh, and uh, shot it in the neck, uh, immediately put up a second shot uh, between the shoulders and the croc lay still for a while. And then it started swimming back to the Zambezi and Miles said, buddy, you got to shoot quick again. Now, uh, that's where the good habits come in and I had already reloaded. So I shot it again in the head and, uh, you know, that concluded the, the hunt. But yeah, very, very exciting hunt. Uh, you know, it's completely different to anything else that I've ever hunted, but uh, a lot of fun nevertheless. Again, the success of this hunt uh, came from uh, massive teamwork from the, the guys at Charlton McCollum you know, uh, picking the right spot for a bait, uh, you know, bringing us into that area the right way, uh, helping with the, you know, and educating on the shot placement and everything. So, uh, you know, a truly magnificent experience to hunt this crocodile uh, with a double rifle. And uh, yeah, you know, I used uh, Woodley 500 grain uh, soft point bullets on this crocodile. And in the end, uh, you know, it yielded a, a very nice 13-foot uh, male crocodile. Um, and it is quite uh, amazing to just sit there for a while and just listen at these crocodiles having a go at that bait. I mean, they would swim right up to it. Uh, there were actually two of them uh, at the bait when we got there, this one and the significantly smaller one. Uh, and they would just, uh, you know, put that long snout into the underneath the skin uh, and grab the meat and if if it didn't let go you know this big brute would just start rolling and tear chunks uh, out of that uh, uh, bait and then swallow it opening the mouth uh, swallowing it and uh, yeah so uh, eventually we just waited for him to calm down and uh, you know when all was said and done that shooting we actually ranged the the shooting distance it was only 35 yards so in the end it wasn't a, a long shot but uh Neither was it difficult, but, uh, you know, as I said, uh, he didn't really just keel over and die from that first uh, two shots that went into him. You're more than welcome, please. He contributed handsomely, so. Now you, you're welcome to take a seat there, brother. Uh, you, want, you want the gun? If you don't mind. Not at all. I can claim that I shot it with a double. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, it's some kickoffs. You say that's one of your guns. <laughs> <laughs> one day when Dave's famous, I'm going to show this picture. And see. One, two, three, up. Bad time, bad time. 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 And that concluded uh, the hunt for one of uh, Africa's river icons, uh, the crocodile, an ancient uh, inhabitant of these rivers, uh, very much like, uh, you know, the fish eagle and the sunsets, uh, they never get old to look at.